Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the we are in the process of solving problems having to do with the notion of multiplication of fraction. Multiplication of fraction. We are on page number 20 and today is our lesson number 26. We are on page number 20. We are about to start the sample problems. Let's get going. Number one. Sample problem number one on page number 20. 3 fifth, 3 fifth times 2 third, 3 fifth times 2 third, do not, do not start multiplying out the top and the bottom right away, see if you can reduce, uh, see if you can reduce something, see if you can cancel out something, we see 3 on the top, we see 3 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 3, divide top by 3, the 3 disappears, becomes 1, this 3 disappears, becomes 1, and that's it, it's just 1 times 2, which is 2, and 5 times 1 is just 5, the answer is 2 fifth. The answer is 2 fifth. Now had it been a real exam, had it been a real exam, I would not have wasted my time writing out this one. It's not necessary to put down 1 there. People understand that if you don't put there here, if you don't put anything underneath 3, if you just cross it out, it is understood that it is not 0. 3 divided by 3 is not 0, it's 1. But because it's 1, it, it serves no purpose. 5 times 1 is still 5, but it is 1. Similarly, it's not necessary to put down one here. Let's not do it like a baby. Let's do it like a grown-up, okay? Next one. 7 ninth times 1 ninth. 7 9 times 1 ninth. 7 9 times the 7 7 9 times 1 ninth. There is nothing that we can reduce here. There is no there is no common there, are, there is no common factor between the top and the bottom. There is no common factor between 7 and 9. So it's simply going to be 7 times 1, which is 7, and 9 times 9, which is 81. Number three. Number three. Number three says six times six times four fifths. Similarly, there is nothing common between five and any of the any of the top numbers six and the four. So it says it will be six times four, which is twenty-four over five and twenty-four over five. We cannot leave it like this because twenty-four is more than five. It is an improper fraction. We must we must represent it in the form of a mixed number. So 24 over 5 is the same as 20 over 5 plus 4 over 5. And finally, 20 over 5 is 4 and 4 fifth. The answer, the final answer is 4 and 4 fifth. There is your 4. That line should not have gone there. 20 over 5 is your 4 right here. And this 4 fifth comes from there. Final answer is 4 and Four fifth. Let's move on. Number four. Question number four says. Question number four says. We are on the next page now. We are on page number twenty-one now. Four one and two fifth. Page twenty-one. One and two fifth times five. 1 and 2 fifths times 5. Now listen carefully. When you are asked to multiply a two number where one of those two numbers happens to be a whole number, you don't have to do the mumbo jumbo of finding the common denominator representing the both of them in fractions. Here's what you can do. The whole number, if it appears later, put it first. So this 5, you're going to write it as 5, and this 1, 1 and 2 fifths, write it here. And then what happens? Let's see what happens here. 5 times 1, 5 times 1 is just 5. Plus, plus, it's, because you see, this, this is, this, this, when we say 1 and 2 fifths, that's the same as 1 plus 2 fifths, isn't it? That's the same as 1 plus 2 fifths. So we did 5 times 1, which is 1, and now 5 times 2 fifths. 5 times 2 fifths. 5 times 2 fifths. Well, the 5 you see in the top, 5 you see in the bottom, it's going to cancel out. So the answer simply is 5 plus a 2, which is 7. The answer is 7. Let me erase this, all of these things so it doesn't get too crowded, so you can see it properly. 
So this is 5 plus 5 times 2 fifths is just 2, so it's 5 plus 2, which is 7. It's not an estimation, that's exact, that's the, that is the exact answer. Because 5 times 2 fifths, the 5 second can cancel out, 5 times 2 fifths, the 5 second can cancel out, right here. 5 times 2 fifths, 5 second can cancel out, it's just 2. So it's 2 plus the 5, which is 7. Let's move on, number 5. Question number 5. That only works if one of the number happens to be a whole number. If they are both in the form of mixed number or fractions, then, then that method is not going to work. Then you're going to have to do it out. For example, right here, number 5, 2 and 1 seventh times 1 and 3 quarters. So we cannot do what, what we did before because they are both in, 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 in mixed numbers. No, but before we get going and before we actually spend our time to find out the precise answer, let's see if we can do some estimation. 2 and 1 seventh, 2 and 1 seventh is approximately 2. Now keep in mind, keep in mind that when we claim that 2 and 1 seventh is approximately 2, that's an underestimation. 2 is an underestimation of 2 and 1 seventh. Similarly, 1 and 3 quarter is also approximately 2. But here, it's an overestimation. 2 is more than 1 and 3 quarter. So 1 is an overestimation, 1 is the underestimation. When we multiply, the answer is going to be around 4. The answer is going to be around 4. But it's very difficult to tell whether the correct answer is going to be slightly over 4 or slightly under 4. Very difficult because one number is an underestimation, one number is an overestimation. But if there happens to be only one answer choice among the four answer choices that they give you, if there is, happens to be only one answer choice which is slightly under 4 or over 4, there, there happens to be only one answer choice which is very close to 4 and no other answer choice, and then that's your answer. Whether it's slightly over 4 or slightly under 4, it doesn't matter, the correct answer, whatever it is, because it's around 4. It's going to be in the neighborhood of 4. If it turns out that there is one answer choice that is slightly over 4 and another answer choice that they give you that is slightly under 4, then it's difficult, then you have no choice but to do out the work. So let's do out the work. Let's do it all out. 2 can be written as, we need a denominator of 7, so we have to write 2 as a denominator of 7, which, which means 2 can be written as 14 over 7, and then plus 1 7. So that's the first quantity, this is 2 plus 1 7, which is 2 and 1 7, times 1 and 3 quarter, how can we write 1 with the diameter of 4? Well, that is simply 4 quarters, 4 quarters, 4 quarters, 4 quarters make 1, 1 and 3 quarters. And that ends up 14 plus 1, that's 15 over 7 times 4 plus 3 is 7 over 4. 7 over 4. Let's see what, go, let's, let's see what happens. So we see 7 on the bottom, we see 7 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. And we end up with 15 over 4. 15 over 4 is simply 12 over 4 plus 3 over 4. 15 is simply 12 plus 3. 12 over 4 is 3 and then 3 quarters. So when we did our estimation, when we did our estimation and we realized that the correct answer, whatever it is, is around 4 and at that point if you glance at the answer choices and you find one answer choice which says 3 and 3 quarter, that's around 4. And if there is no other answer choice that is slightly over 4, then you're done. Because the answer has to be around 4. This is it. 3 and 3 quarter. 3 and 3 quarters. Not quarter, 3 and 3 quarters. Let's do the last one, number 6. One more, we're going to do number 6. The same exact logic, the same exact philosophy, the same exact methodology, same exact rationale will apply. That is to say, we're going to estimate it first and we'll see if we can simply get away with it. We only do the actual work if it is absolutely necessary. 4 and 4 fifths times 1 and 4 sixths. 1 and 4 sixths. The very first thing that we should do is to ask yourself, are these mixed fractions written in the most reduced form? The answer is no. 1 and 4 sixths. 4 sixths can be reduced. Let's reduce this so it can reduce our work. This is, it, 4 divided by 2 is 2 and 6 divided by 2 is 3. 
So it's one and two third times four and four fifth. Okay, watch what happens. We're trying to find the estimation first. Four and four fifth, four fifth, I would say four fifth is something very close to one. So we're gonna estimate it as five. Four and four fifth is about five. Five times one and two third. Five times one and two third. Watch, watch what happens. Rather, not, not two fifth, two third. Two third. Five times one is five plus five times two third, five times two third, five times two is ten. So it's gonna be ten over three plus a five. And ten over three is approximately ten over three is approximately three. It's approximately three. So five plus three, the answer is gonna be around eight. The answer is gonna be around eight. If you happen to find uh, at that point, if you look at the answer choices, and if, if you happen to find only one answer choice that is very close to 8, either under 8, or slightly over 8, or for that matter, exactly 8, and that's your answer. If you find that there are more than one answer choices, which are slightly under 8, or slightly over 8, or one of them is exactly, and one answer choice is exactly 8, and the other one is slightly over 8 or under 8, then you have to do the ex exact proper work. But in most cases, that does not happen. Most cases, they do not present to you answer choices in that form. There is always one answer choice that's going to come close to, well, I shouldn't say there is always. In most cases, there's going to be one answer choice that's going to come close to what you're looking for. We're looking for something around 8. Now, let's see, let's do out the work, see what we get. Okay, let's do out the work. But you see, work is going to be too much here. 4, we have to write it as the diameter of 5. Uh, so, how many fifths make a 4? Well, 20, 20 fifths make a 4, 20 divided, by, 20 divided by 5 is 4, plus 4 fifths times, we have to write 1 as a, as a denominator of 3, which is going to be 3 third plus 2 third. 20 plus 4 is 24, over 5, times 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 over 3. I'm going to erase all of this work so that we don't get confused. Remember, we're looking for something around 8. We see 5 at the bottom, we see 5 on the top. If we divide top and bottom by 5, 5 goes away. And 24 divided by 3, what do you know? 20, 24 divided by 3 is exactly 8. The answer is exactly 8. We said it's going to be around 8. It turns out that the correct answer is exactly 8. So when you arrive at the conclusion that the answer has to be around 8, answer has to be around 8, uh, and it turns out that there are no answer choices that are around 8 and there is one answer choice that's exactly 8 and that's your answer. That will have to be. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.